It's Wednesday, February 25th, 2015. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, horror news and a parasite. Let's Let's do do this. So yeah, I pretty much have ignored the Oscars forever now. I just have never really been super interested in them. But I mean, I'm not, you know... No, I'm not opposed. Too much. We spent. We could spend a whole show talking about how awards shows are garbage and worthless. But yeah. in, you know, in, if you compare them all, the major ones in the United States, the Oscars are probably the worst ones. Yeah, and basically, I know. It's noticed, like I have more respect for the other ones. Usually, people who like anime, people who don't really pay attention to other kinds of media, like you know, there's that that type of person. They tend not to pay attention to this stuff because they don't expect anime to win, and. This time around, at least, the anime people actually noticed that the Oscars are kind of messed up because of that guy. They didn't notice the year before, the year before, the year before. Well, because now they had that guy who was a real Oscar voter who said he voted for Big Hero 6 because he watched it with his kids and he wasn't too keen on the two Chinese movies that were in contention, which I assume he meant Song of the Sea and Princess Kaguya. The, uh, the way Oscars are decided... Old right, white men. ...is a bunch of And old, they don't even watch them. 90% of the people who vote are old white dudes. They're not required to watch every movie. They just get these free screener copies, and they just vote, and they're members of the Academy, whoever the fuck they are, and they can vote or even abstain on categories if they don't give a shit. They vote pretty randomly. And it's just or... a bunch of old white American dudes, and they just decide. It doesn't, you know, and then people are like, oh, I'm so thankful I won this award. It's like, as far as I'm concerned, if you win an Oscar nowadays or ever, that might even mean your movie is worse because it's a movie that old white American dudes prefer ah. for whatever reason, which means it's probably not the best movie. But just literally those two Chinese movies... That old white, you, you're, why do people, it seems like 90% of the conversations, period, that occur are, wow, look at how stupid people are. And it's like, yeah, I've realized how stupid people are since last millennia. I well, don't need the- to keep discussing it in 90% of conversations ever. If all you have to say is, wow, here's another example of how stupid, evil, etc., people are why even bother (laughs) saying it or thinking about it right just shut up and let's talk about something else was it george carlin said this uh some other comedians may have also said this but imagine the average person it's pretty fucking dumb right Mm -hmm. half of people are dumber than that that's right (laughs) so i don't have any news because there's not a lot of news i mean yeah we're going to be at anime boston but we have no idea what our schedule is going to be so we can't really talk about it much yet Mm -hmm. we're going to be at zenkai con and we know our schedule but we were told we're not allowed to talk about it yet but we'll be there doing a whole bunch of i think they just don't want us because it might change and whatever but yeah guys it's not like there's anything super secret on the zenkai con schedule but i uh, it's not meta moment because this is i'm not talking about us not geek nights but i point out that with kineticon when I, when me, I'm, I made a bunch of schedule changes, and we'll just move stuff around live months and months and months before the con. Like, yeah, the schedule's going to change. Who cares? Why hide it from you until two weeks before and then pretend that schedules don't change, guys? Don't Why does every con do it wrong? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, we got all that stuff coming up, but no real news there, and I actually have been watching a ton of anime. Mm-hmm. In fact, I paid... For the Funimation streaming site, independent for, of Crunchyroll. I pay for Crunchyroll, not paying for Funimation. The thing is, all the new anime I want to watch, other than uh, Yoa Pedal, is on Funimation. And you know what else is on Funimation that I never actually finished watching and I really want to see the rest of? Mm. Uh, Fujiko Mine. Mm. Yeah. I've got like 10 or t- to 12 shows in my Crunchyroll queue that I have not finished watching or still coming out. You should skip all of those and just watch uh, Yurikuma Arashi. Um, all right. Yeah, Where see, I am. So that show, Emily and I watched the first episode, and we didn't pay for the streaming, so we watched it, you know, with commercials and boot, you know, low resolution. Oh, just because- get the torrent. Eh. Here's a, here's a pro tip for people. There's a fan subber out there called Horrible Subs. And you know what Horrible Subs does? 
they s- rip s- videos straight from the Funimation website with everything intact, not even trying to hide it. So much, and they for put ev- it straight on BitTorrent in full quality. So much for every argument everyone ever made about why they watch fan subs and how it's not <laughs> illegal or immoral to do so. I have downloaded many a horrible subs torrent, and I don't give a shit. So anyway, we watched one episode of it because. For those of you who don't know, the show is also called Love Bullet. The name basically translates to Lesbian Bear Storm. Mm -hmm. And looking at it just from the outside, like looking at pictures of what it is. I see bears. Yeah, descriptions of what it is. I see Ikuhara. Well, the fact that it's called Lesbian Bear Storm. I mean, Ikuhara brings lesbians along all the way. You know, talking about judging anime by their cover, it's the kind of show that a discerning person like myself or Scott would have ignored out of hand but for the fact that it is directed by Kunihiko Ikuhara, the same crazy dude who made Utena and Penguin Drum happen. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty much the only reason I was going to give this show a shot. Uh, we watched episode one, and it was half really weird in that Ikuhara way, and half really weird in a, I don't want to say perverted, but kind of porny way. So I'm going to look at each so other. So in Ikuhara way. Mm, so take some aspects of the Utena movie, dial it up a notch. So Ikuhara, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, up though, up though. You, you haven't seen... I mean, he's that, he was a long time ago. He's had time to, <laughs> to ferment. He's, he's prepared. The way before <laughs> him has been prepared. He's, he's been fermenting for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had other stuff going on, and I come back home from that ski trip, and I'm like, so you want to watch more of that lesbian bear show? And she's like, okay, I guess. And we watch another episode, and it's really, really, really good. And I immediately paid for Funimation, and we've been watching it, like, immediately after it comes out. I, I'm not going to spoil anything about it, other than, yes, it has lesbians. Yes, some of the lesbians, but not all of them, are literally bears. Like, the Rawr. plot is basically the Wall of Severance, which is all capital letters, uh, darker than black style, has separated the world of humans from the world of bears because a planet Camellia, a star, blew up a long time ago and dust from that star rained down on the earth and woke up all the bears and the bears started eating people because that's what they do. Is it from stars because, like, Ursa Major and Minor? Maybe. <laughs> so, I've, I've already seen through everything. The, the, every character, every scene, everything gets a subtitle. So there, there'll there's be not like, really that many other animals in space that aren't like crabs or scorpions. So they'll be like the name of a school and the subtitle will say place. Or sometimes it'll say two weeks ago and the subtitle will say flashback. So every scene has like a name. Every person has like a, like a formal taxonomical name. There are... Two kinds of beings in the world to this point, eight episodes in. There are bears and there are Yuris. Okay. Yuris are girls who may or may not be bears. So there's no dudes who aren't. There are, in fact, no men in the show. There you go. Until the most recent episode, the most, most recent one. One man appeared. Is he but a bear? We had uh, no. He, he, I do not believe he was a bear. Is he a Orion with a belt? So he with was three wearing, stars on it. He was wearing high heels and pretty sure voice acted by a woman. So it was him. Mm, uh, it was basically proto Akio. Okay. It, it's hard to say, mm. but that was the first male character in the show. Other than there are three bears known as the Judgments, and they preside over the Yuri court and they approve Yuri. Mm. Shaba Dadu. Right. They're they're basically Toga, uh, L- little Toga and mm. Mickey crossed with Ruka Toga. Sure, okay, whatever. The show is really great, and it's about bullying. It's about lesbianism. It's about bears. Bears, kind of. Hey, Yogi. <laughs> Made a boo boo. <laughs> Honestly, I'll say this. If you're new to anime, like if you haven't watched a lot of anime, don't watch this show. This show is not, this show is a little too advanced for you. Uh, it's also a show where if you're going to watch it in a place where your doesn't watch anime parents may happen into the room. I would suggest not watching it in that situation. You think they'll be scared by the bears, Rar? Um, 
the bears are actually kind of tiny and adorable, except they do just fucking kill people. You should, like, do, a, you should do a mashup with Hajime no Ippo, the part where he punches the bear. And, oh, that'd be a good mashup. Knocks, not, the thing is, that's a full-size like grizzly bear. Well, you know the karaoke song, the bear song, from when they're trying to scare the bears out of that giant stomach in Adventure Time? Oh. Wow. We are bears, 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 bears. Yep. I was going to make an AMV to Yuri Kuma to that song, but someone beat me to it. Have you watched some Adventure Time? Uh, I'm caught up on Adventure Time. All right. Yeah. Well, well, I think I am. What was the last episode you saw? If you remind me, I'll be able to tell you. Uh, uh, okay, we'll talk after. <laughs> we'll talk after about Adventure Time. <laughs> we've, been, we've been charging our Adventure Time laser. There will be a show on Adventure Time because the show might be gearing up toward an end or something. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, seriously, though, Lesbian Bear Storm, I really, really like it, and so does Emily. It's not done yet. There's only a few more episodes. It's only a 12-episode show. However, I want to point something out. The most recent episode, episode 8, like, all these plot threads came together into a ridiculous climax, and then Ikuhara did his magic. A character is about to say something, and it's one of those, like, this is the answer to the big question. And then as that character is talking... Thunder happens, drowning out her voice, and then a bunch of characters say a bunch of things to each other that you can't hear over the sound of the rain, and then a character shoots a gun at one of the other three characters, and you don't know which one. The episode ended on that, and then I went on Wikipedia, and I noticed that the next episode is not episode nine. The next episode of this 12-episode show is episode 8.5. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, the last episode is episode 11? No, it's still episode 12 as far as I can tell. I think... My, so it's a 13-episode show? I uh, Now I'm worried that episode 9 is going to be followed by episode 9.3333. You cannot continue to be a bear. <laughs> so, you cannot bear. <laughs> you can't be a bear. We already know you can't be a bear. I am confident. You're a Yuri. Yeah, I, well... I, well, there are no men, so I don't know if I'm a Yuri or not. I think Yuri means human, and this is a world where there basically aren't men, mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting because it has sort of aggressive sexuality and complex <clears throat> relationships. It's called Why the Last Man. It's been done, bro. But because there is literally no gender at all, or sex at all, in terms of like, you know, chromosomal sex, that is not a factor because all characters are women. But they're still having sex. Yes, some of them are and some of them aren't. So as with a result, bears. you get, well, yes, some people have mm-hmm. sex with bears. And so it's bestiality. Well, so remember Wolf's Reign where they're just wolves, but people see them as humans? Mm-hmm. Part of the plot is that two of the characters are bears who snuck into the human world disguised as humans. And they just look like people, but sometimes you see them and they're just bears. Right. And they, What do they eat? People, there's a huge body body count in this show. (laughs) A lot of girls get eaten by bears, just killed and eaten, and that's that. And then the next day, it's their fault for tasting good. Oh my god, a delicious smell. (laughs) Gow gow. Are you done talking about bears? No, the show. I'm really obsessed with this show. I kind of want to do a whole episode on it. So if you don't watch it soon, Emily and I are just going to do an episode on the whole thing because it's just Mm -hmm. it is. It's my favorite anime since Kill La Kill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm not even joking. So, in news that's not that big, but interesting, uh, there's this guy, I think I've mentioned him on the show before, he's a comic book writer named Matt Fraction, and he's a really cool dude. I just happen to be like the one person who doesn't like any comics he writes. Ah, uh, that happens. <laughs> but everyone else loves his comics. Um, and his wife, Kelly Sue DeConnick, right? They uh, did this comic called Sex Criminals a while ago. Oh, which, yeah, I remember that. Like a year plus two years ago, maybe. I wasn't a big fan of that comic, but it has an interesting premise, which is basically there's two people, when they have sex and have an orgasm, time stops, and then they can commit crimes. I have witnessed two separate conversations, one among nerds and one among muggles, like non-nerds, where one person was attempting to describe the pl- the premise of this comic to the other person, and the other person has more incredulity than you would expect a human eyebrow to be able to express. But anyway, uh, they signed a deal to turn this into a TV series on some sort of TV channel. So that's going to be interesting, seeing that kind of thing adapted for TV. But more interestingly, 
is that they've actually, like, their production company, they're going to use their production company that, that they have created for this to turn more other comics, perhaps by other people besides them, uh, and turn those things into TV shows since, you know, <coughs> since Walking Dead and others have proven that this is a profitable pathway. So hopefully, other comics that we like... It's not going to happen with Saga. <laughs> Pro- not with Saga, but there are other comics that we like, hopefully, will be turned into television shows that don't suck uh, you know, and are worth watching. Yeah. Or perhaps comic books that you didn't have the time to read or you don't want to read. There's too many issues or something. You know, at this point, what I'd really like to see is if they made a TV show that was based on the My Little Pony comic. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> see what you did there? But yeah, this is a really interesting thing that's happening because it's not like you know, whatever. Yeah. And if you look at some of the, you know, the peoples involved here, right? You know, it's peoples that people like. It's real with real people. Reels. So things of the day. Many people, it is not an original joke to say, hey, if everyone's just like commenting on other people, like watching other people play video games, and those people. There's a South Park episode about this. Yes, and everyone makes that joke. Uh, Eventually, are people just going to be doing Let's Plays of other people doing Let's Plays? And you know what? Uh, That happened, and it's actually really, really funny. So these guys. There, there's a gentleman. What are on the, the names of these guys? Uh, the YouTube channel is Retsupurai. All right, cool, whatever, bro. Yeah, I don't know. It's got a lot of views because other people seem to appreciate this. Uh, they watch Cloud eight seven four five O, who is also apparently the same gentleman as Cloud eight seven four five. Okay. Do a boss rush of Super Mario Brothers two on the NES because oh the lost levels n- no it doesn't have bosses Doki Doki Panic Super Mario two oh uh, okay so Super Mario two USA because or that- was he actually playing Doki Doki Panic he was playing Mario two USA okay because a boss rush of the game that had some of the simplest I'm like, bosses lost levels in the world. does not have bosses yeah <laughs> like this was something I guess the world it has was Koopa for. They, they rushed all the Koopas <laughs> or Koopas only so Cloud eight seven four five zero is doing his commentary, which he clearly recorded after the fact, as he boss rushes and explains the intricate strategy of throwing. All you do in Mario 2 to be bosses is don't get hit by their slow-ass, easy-to-dodge attacks. At one point... And at an opportune moment, grab something and throw it at them. When Cloud87450 is fighting Triclide the second time, one of the guys doing the meta Let's Play is like, wow, I'm really surprised that the solution here involved throwing. <laughs> But the, the moment of joy is they, he gets to wart because there aren't that many bosses in Mario 2. Mm-hmm. So he gets to wart. The and final then, boss, but if you're not familiar. And then one guy on the meta stream is just like, there's four minutes left. It doesn't take four minutes to beat wart. There's four minutes left in this video. He, they, <laughs> like pumpkins come out of these like things. Like, not just pumpkins, also that weird onion guy. Right, well, there's like this organ, basically, like the kind that you see in a church. But Why does Ward have that in his room? It's like the kind of thing the Phantom of the Opera would have, only with three big trumpety pipes. Or tuba pipes, almost like bon, right? And I never understood why that was just, there. He, this Phantos is up top, but he doesn't move at all. He's just chilling. They should have made keys come out of there. And if you yeah. grabbed a key by accident, Phantos would be like, "Ah ha ha!" No, they should. Here's how I would have made this boss fight: <laughs> You've got to get vegetables out and throw them into Ward's mouth, but you've also got to open like three doors. On the other and side. And you can't, like, you, normally you beat Phantos by running the fuck away, but you're trapped in this room. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Phantos doesn't do anything. These uh, pumpkins come out, and you just have to catch them and then <laughs> throw them at Ward. It's not hard. There's four <laughs> minutes left, dude. <laughs> what is he doing for four minutes? Is uh, he going to watch the credits? Uh, so I recommend you watch this because it proves that, yes, it is, in fact, possible to do a live stream of someone else's live stream and make it entertaining. Well, it's a non-live stream of a non-live True. Let's Play. I'm kind of thinking like me and Scott should do a commentary on this Download video. someone else's Let's Play and then do a non-live commentary of it. Yeah. but uh, <laughs> Or do a commentary of this meta commentary that's going double meta. 
The interesting things can happen there. We should do a riff tracks of a riff tracks. A oh, whoa dog. Don't go all inception Let's on Let's take me a now. riff tracks and be like, that joke was lame. Yo dog. You guys could do better next time. Oh, that was such a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys totally got it. <laughs> All right, Albert so Vitti permitty anyway. Speaking of meta and live streaming and whatnot, this is dude. He's a Counter Strike live streamy good dude. He's way better at Counter Strike than either of us. Yeah, and he has a brother, and the brother is not good at Counter Strike. Maybe not even as good as us. And on the guy who's good at Counter Strike's birthday, the not good at Counter Strike brother wanted to get him a present. So you know, he just sort of called him up, said happy birthday. You know, agreed to a match of Counter Strike. You know, and they started playing some Counter-Strike. Except, uh, little did the good Counter-Strike player know that his brother had called and hired, perhaps, or asked a legit pro Counter-Strike player to come on over to his house. Basically, he got a, an aimbot made of meat. Right. So, basically, while his brother is playing, you know, and uh, he, the, good, the pro guy plays... And the pro guy just goes and finds his brother and kills him. And the brother's getting all upset that somehow his other brother who sucks suddenly became way, way, way better than him. Like 12 kills better than him. Uh, but then, as soon as the brother dies, the pro guy has to play like shit on purpose so that the good brother doesn't suspect anything and realize... <laughs> that the shitty brother is actually a pro. That's probably the best moment where the guy's like playing like a silver. Yeah. Like you really got that guy in the kneecap four times. So and so the birthday present to the brother who loves Counter-Strike is you got to play Counter-Strike against this pro guy, right? So it makes a really kind of funny, awesome video. You should check this out. Yeah. And also do similar things to this if you can. So in the meta moment, the book club book is Watership Down. I read, Scott, another, make, I read make, another chapter. Make the referral link for me. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, you should try actually sending me that message digitally so, it, you know. I just sent it to you in a much more direct fashion. That's not a play that I'll ever remember it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys... <laughs> Unless I do it right now. So, you read another chapter, so now the rabbits are hanging out with the cult rabbits. Yeah, weird the, rabbits. doesn't say that they're a cult. They're they're, just, they're, there's something up with them, though. They're weird, aren't they? They're weird. Weird well, rabbits. Whatever. Did you get to the part where they have like art and stuff in their weird water? Yeah, they got art. Yeah. I like how the the normal rabbits don't huh, play. Which watership down one do we want? Uh oh, you're doing it I right now? I guess the one that says Amazon Prime. Uh. Yeah, whichever whichever one people are likely to actually buy. Yeah. So yeah, if you buy the book club book through the Geek Nights website, Scott will get a tiny amount of money. Woo. That'll fund more Geek Nights happening, I guess. Geek Nights doesn't cost money. Well, it does, but it does. It's but not like it's gonna matter. It costs less money than other stupid hobbies we have. I mean <laughs> So uh in other news, at PAX East, which is like next weekend, <laughs> it's coming up real quick. Uh Friday, March sixth at four thirty PM in the Bumblebee Theater, we are presenting What is Losing? It's gonna be awesome. And the rest of PAX, we're just gonna be hanging out and it's gonna be awesome. You should be there. So aside from lesbian bears and uh, crazy fucking Mito Suji, who I hope wins that race. <laughs> I do not hope Mito Suji wins. Mito Suji's my man. Main character guy is going to win the race. It's a sports anime. thing is, I like... You know what? It's, it's, it kind of dovetails in because we've both been watching horror anime lately as well. Because, you know, we like Yami Shibai. <laughs> There's another okay. Yami Shibai. I don't think season two is quite as good as season one, but it's still good. It's still good. And uh, Scott turned me on to... Uh, not double hard, <laughs> <laughs> but horror news. So, uh, and yeah. I've been watching Parasite with, an, with a Y. So I was on the Crunchyroll that I pay for looking for something else to watch, and I saw this horror news, and it was short. So I'm like, all right, let's see what this is about. And the premise of this show is amazing. The greatest, one of the greatest... It's so up our alley. One of the greatest premises, conceits for a story I've ever seen. There's a kid in school. Of course, it's anime. And at night, one night, well, first of all, he's in school and he's mad skeptical and sciencey like us. But there's like some girls in school who are all like, go spirits, ooh. And he's like, you guys are full of shit, whatever. So he goes to bed one night, but he can't sleep. He's got some insomnias. Shimbu, and he hears Shimbu. someone coming down the street. And he's like, who the hell's going down the street like late at night? What the fuck? And he hears them saying, Shimboon, Shimboon, and he's like, a word I learned. Why from is there a Eagle? newspaper being delivered at midnight 
That doesn't make any fucking sense. Who is saying that while they're running down the street at midnight? So he goes to look, and then in the window comes a newspaper. It's like, whoa, what the fuck is a newspaper coming in the window at midnight? He looks at the newspaper and says, horror news. And it tells him horrible things that are happening in the world, including horrible things that will happen tomorrow. Like tomorrow, your teacher is going to die in a car accident. And tomorrow, guess what? He tries to show the teacher the newspaper. It turned into a regular newspaper, even though it's one he doesn't subscribe to. Well, and his action kind of causes the car accident. And the teacher gets in a car accident, and he's like, oh my God, and they die immediately. I like how And he rapidly, sees a ghost coming out of the teacher's body. I like how rapidly the show escalates, where he's like, well, that's crazy, and then that girl is like, oh, it's the horror news. Every time you read it, it takes like what? Some amount of time? A hundred days off your life. hundred days off your so life. He try- so then it's like it gets good, right? He's like trying to avoid reading it. He tries to shutter the window, but the newspaper busts right the fuck in. Yep. And he has a teacher's staple over at one point. The teacher is like, nothing happened. What is wrong with you? He's like, don't you see this newspaper right here? And the teacher's like, whoa, there is a newspaper right there. But it's not the horror news. It's the regular news. But where the fuck did it come from? Yeah. And then the teacher's like, all right, I'll tear up this newspaper. And as soon as the teacher does that, the spirit like that brought the newspaper starts to fuck with the teacher big time. And it's like, whoa. That spirit is great because at one point the spirit's like, oh, you don't want to read the horror news, do you? Well, fuck you. I'm a ghost demon, whatever. Yeah. The, it's on. The, the, the spirit that delivers the news and makes him read it is just pretty much evil. Uh, but yeah, basically what happens after the introductory stuff and you get this premise and all this awesome parts where like he's figuring out the deal with the horror news. You get basically these multi-part stories uh, that are sort of just triggered by the horror news and center around the main character, but aren't about the horror news. Like the first one is about going on a field trip and there's a vampire. And it's mostly about him trying to find the vampire and the horror news just sort of gives him some tips, right? Yep. And the second one is about aliens where the horror news is like, aliens are coming. So then it's all about him dealing with the alien problem and the horror news doesn't really come into it very much other than, you know, sort of instigating the story of it. And I haven't watched anything beyond that. But, but it's interesting because it's just it's po- one of those shows where the main character is not stupid and doesn't do things too differently from, like, what I would do because what else can you do? Yeah, he's, he's a skeptical person, but, I mean, he's seen the horror news, so, of course, he yep. believes now, which you would if you saw it the way it's he like saw in, it. It's like in uh, Bokurano, uh, Bokurano where right. the kids are like, this giant robot, we're pilot, whatever. They're like, let's go to the military. And they go straight to the military. Like, well, eventually they go. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they as soon as they can. I think one of the girl's parents is in the military or something. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so horror news is this really interesting concept at the core. And the parts where they're in, like, talking about the deal with the horror news, because they do talk about it a little bit in, in, the other, in the other stories. Like, in the vampire story, he's like, I'm on a field trip. If the horror news doesn't get delivered, that means my family can just move houses. Yeah, the horror news got fucking delivered on the field trip, all right? <laughs> you can't escape that shit. What the fuck's wrong with you? But he thought about it. He's like, huh, yeah, I gotta right? get out of this. But most of, that was like the only part where they that was interesting, right? Is the horror news part. You don't really care too much about the horror, the boring, normal horror stories that go along with it. Now, the other thing about this show is the art, which is like cheapo CG. That's like, it's basically like a manga that moves the almost. The kid makes a great face. Yeah. It's like they use, determined. they use cheapo CG to make it, and it looks like a manga. Like, there's not a lot of animation going on. There's a lot of, like, you know, still frame, move the camera back and forth while sound effects play kind of stuff. It's very cheaply made. But if you compare it to other things that were as cheaply made, it's like the CG isn't actually, like, bad initial D bad. It's just not super expensive CG. It's like you can tolerate looking at it. It's not painful on the eyes. It's just cheap and not expensive to make. And uh. Not really fancy models, but they're not bad models. It's just like, oh, that guy's eyes look a little funny, you know, but you're not like, oh, this is initial D bad. It looks like a PlayStation 1. Ah. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's in that, like, it's in the realm of horror type stuff because that deals with horror subject matter, but it's not... Trying to scare you horror like Yamishibai. Yeah, this does not. I mean, no. I'm, not, I'm not scared by Yamishibai either, but this doesn't even try to scare you. You'd have to be like a three year old to be scared by horror news, <laughs> right? It's more mystery, supernatural, X Files, like, ooh, what's going to happen, yo? So I've been watching 
Parasite with a Y. It's almost closer to Scooby Doo if you think about it. Yeah, kind of. Except is. instead of it being a person in a costume, it's actually actually it's the actually, horror news. It's actually a vampire. Yo, I am a demon. Stop trying to avoid my newspaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you want my newspaper? No, well, tough. I think he asked the dude, he's like, are you a Shinigami? He's like, no, what the fuck's wrong? Those only come if you're about to die, which is going to happen a lot sooner because yeah, like, you're reading kid? the hard news. Listen, son, you don't know shit about the spirit world, so don't try to talk to me. That's the reason I'm giving you the don't hard news. Don't be yeah. front. That's right. <laughs> so Parasite with a Y, the Maxim, is actually based on a manga from the 90s that I'd seen around occasionally. But I'd never actually like read, didn't read, I just kind of ignored it. It was one of those things like you'd see sometimes. But I've definitely known that there was an anime called Parasite with a Y, and I knew nothing else about it, and I assumed that it was like a generic shown in whatever. Well, it's vintage like recently, like end of last year. Like, yeah. it's really new. I knew I knew of its existence, but I did not care. So I've watched a bunch of it and it's much like horror news. It's a it's a show where there's it's horror and there's a character, the main character who pretty much is smart and reacts to these things the best way you can. Very similar protagonists in that regard. Mm -hmm. So the general plot is that this guy is laying in bed, and independent of that, creepy monsters are just like eating people's faces with horrible, bloody, gory body horror, like all over Japan. And then this guy is just like in his bedroom. Wait, asleep. like they're act like live people. Like a live Their faces like, are just getting ripped off by So a live ghosts? person is like standing there. And her husband walks over and is being all creepy. And she's like, well, what's wrong? And his whole head opens up into a giant Cthulhu monster filled with teeth, just bites her head off, blood everywhere. All right. And then it cuts this kid. And he's just like, you know, laying around in his bedroom. He's asleep. And this weird alien looking bug thing comes from the sky and starts crawling up to go up in his nose. And he wakes up and goes, and knocks it out. And it's on, it like lands on the floor and he looks at it. It's a scary bug thing. So he does what anyone would do in that situation. Puts it in a jar. He freaks the fuck out and tries to smash it. Okay. And it attacks him. And it jumps. How big is it? So it keeps trying to like get like a like, like couple inches, like tiny. Okay. It tries, keeps trying to jump in his face and in his ear and like get into his head. And just put a plastic bag around here. Wait. So he <laughs> puts his hand out and it hits his hand and burrows into his hand and he sees it like slithering and writhing under his skin up his arm. Mm -hmm. So he grabs some headphones and ties them around his arm and is like holding him there desperately. The thing's like trying to get past this tourniquet he's made and he's screaming and knocking get everything off. a knife off. and... Yeah, so he's screaming and yelling and knocking everything over and freaking out. And then his parents come into the room. They're like, the fuck, son? You on drugs? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, there's the thing. It's trying. And it's gone, of course. Yeah. And he's like, that was weird. So fast forward a bit. His hand it becomes like D's hand in initial D, except it can conform. Like, basically, his hand can go woodly, woodly, woo, like the villain in uh, Speed Graffer. And it can change size and shape like Jake the dog. And it can turn into, like, giant knived dragons or whatever. And his hand just goes all woodly woodly and starts talking to him. Does he? So he can't control it. It's just nope. It hundred percent controls his hand. But because just, it's basically because he kept the parasite contained into the hand. And the parasite's like it makes a mouth and is like, Ugh, God damn it! I was trying to get into your brain. Well, this sucks. So yeah, if it would have gotten into his head, it would have just controlled his whole body. Now they got into other people's heads. One of them got into a dog, and that was weird. <laughs> okay. And basically. Him and this thing have this sort of like Midori no Hibi, like we have came to team. We just got like the parasites. That's a common like, theme in anime. The parasites like I don't really know what I am because you interrupted my life cycle. So are we cool? Can we just like can you just deal with me being here? And then he's like, but the other ones that you are killing people, I gotta stop it. And the parasites like, yeah, I don't really care about that. So don't. Don't make trouble for me. Yeah, I mean, like, if I'm a bear and all the other bears decide to go and kill all humans, but I don't care about killing all the humans, and the other bears don't care that I don't care about killing all humans, and I just, you know, eat fish from the river. Well, no, you go and have sex with the humans instead. And, honey, and try to get promise kisses. Have some honey from the tree and do some Winnie the Pooh action. Oh, um, it's, it's like, you, what's, what's the problem? In Yuri Bear Storm, when the honey comes out, that is, that isn't even allegory at that point. That's just honey. So sweet. It is. It is the sweet. It has a delicious smell. <laughs> gory, 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 gory. So, like at one point, the the parasite like 
basically he's like, I should go to the police. The parasite's like, they would just like send you to a government thing and cut me off and probably keep you in prison forever. How does that and thing even know about human society? Because it he it demands that he like give it books and stuff. So when he's asleep, <laughs> it like when he's asleep, it like makes big eyes and like mouths and it types on keyboards and like surfs the internet all night while he's asleep, like just learning shit about multipass. And it basically it kind of turns him into a badass because it'll kind of do stuff for him. Like, uh, he, it helps him beat a guy up because the guy's being a dick. But it also messes with him because it doesn't understand, like, what, what's going on. It's almost, you know what it's like? This show is a cross between Birdie the Mighty, Midori no Hibby, and D's hand in Initial D. But Initial all, D? Really? Initial D. Vampire Hunter D. That's a hand that can drive. The gum tape deathmatch gets a whole lot more interesting. <laughs> he used his tongue to push it that extra distance. <laughs> Sure, I'll tape my hand to the wheel. I don't give a shit. My hand can all go woodly woodly. So not no, a I, I don't think you understand the degree to which his hand goes woodly woodly. It basically forms a giant like dragon and fights with another one of these things. Doesn't the law of like, conservation of matter no, come into this? Not at all. Not at all. This is like, I mean, at least Attack on Titan like attempts to deal with that issue. This thing poorly. Basically, this thing is like. It's like a lot of that Japanese body horror kind of stuff is. And it's just very woodly. Like, look, that's it right there. What like, the fuck? Yeah, it's like, I need to use the internet. Let me look stuff up. Okay. The show is crazy, and I don't know what to say about it other than that Emily found it kind of disturbing but interesting. I find it kind of hilarious. <laughs> so I kind of recommend it. At least watch an episode or two, because it's just there's not a lot else out there is to that like. Pictures it. of live action parasite. Uh, there is a live action parasite. What the fuck? Yeah, it uh, it does stuff like that. Like it doesn't want him to go somewhere, so it just makes like this giant finger arm. <laughs> just cut that shit off, yo. Uh, yeah, he tra- This kid does everything that you would try to do. Just take a cleaver and go for it. Yeah, it doesn't work out so well. Why not? Watch your show. Ah. <laughs> cleaver a little farther. <laughs> Man. I don't know if that's from the manga or Just if that's Photoshop. Cleaver a bit farther up. <laughs> I would not cleave that. I'd be afraid it would hurt. You know, cleaver at the shoulder if you have you to. You see what's on my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, go for the shoulder. You got you know, you need a life. I'd rather have a life without the arm than to deal so with. So this show is, what's interesting is the person directing it, uh, Kenichi uh, Shimizu, uh, he's one of those guys who was like a unit director for like individual episodes, for like a million shows. And apparently he was an animator on Goof Troop. All right. But this is the only thing I can see that he actually directed, like fully directed. That was a real show. Right. And it's pretty well done and actually kind of interesting. And I actually kind of enjoy it quite a bit. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. It's Wednesday, February 25th, 2015. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, horror news and a parasite. Let's Let's do this. this. So, yeah, I pretty much have ignored the Oscars forever now. I just have never really been super interested in them. But I mean, I'm not, you know... No, I'm not a po- too much. If we spent t- we could spend a whole show talking about how awards shows are garbage and worthless. But yeah. in, you know, in, if you compare them all, the major ones in the United States, 
The Oscars are probably the worst ones. Yeah, and basically, I know like I have more respect for the other ones. Usually, people who like anime people who don't really pay attention to other kinds of media, like you know, there's that that type of person. They tend not to pay attention to this stuff because they don't expect anime to win. And this time around, American dudes prefer uh, for whatever reason, which means it's probably not the best movie. But just literally those two Chinese movies. That old white, you, you're. Why do people? It seems like ninety percent of the conversations, period, that occur are, "Wow, look at how stupid people are." And it's like, yeah, I've realized how stupid people are since last millennia. I well, don't need the- to keep discussing it in ninety percent of conversations ever. If all you have to say is, "Wow, here is another example of how stupid, evil, etc." people are why even bother <laughs> saying it or thinking about it right well, I, just shut it, up and let's talk about something else was it george carlin said this uh some other comedians may have also said this but imagine the average person it's pretty fucking dumb right mm-hmm. half of people are dumber than that that's right <laughs> So, I don't have any news, because there's not a lot of news. I mean, yeah, we're going to be at Anime Boston, but we have no idea what our schedule's going to be, so we can't really talk about it. We finished watching, and I really want to see the rest of mm. uh, Fujiko Mine. And yeah. I've got like 10 or t- to 12 shows in my Crunchyroll queue that I have not finished watching or still coming out. You should skip all of those and just watch uh, Yurikuma Arashi. Um, all right. Yeah, Where see, I am. So, that show... Emily and I watched the first episode, and we didn't pay for the streaming, so we watched it, you know, with commercials and boot, you know, low resolution. Oh, just because- get the torrent. Eh. Here's a here's a pro tip for people. There's a fan subber out there called Horrible Subs, and you know what Horrible Subs does? They s- rip s- videos straight from the Funimation website with everything intact, not even trying to hide it. So much, and they for put ev- it straight on BitTorrent in full quality. So much for every argument everyone ever made about why they watch fan subs and how it's not <laughs> illegal or immoral to do so. I have downloaded many a horrible subs torrent, and I don't give a shit. So anyway, we watched one episode of it because not yet. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be at Zenkai Con. And we know our schedule, but we were told we're not allowed to talk about it yet. But we'll be there doing well, a whole bunch I of panels. I think they just don't want us because it might change and it, whatever. But yeah, guys. It's not like there's anything super secret on the Zenkai Con schedule. But I, uh, it's not Meta Moment because I'm not talking about us, not Geek Nights. But I point out that with Kineticon, when I, when me, I'm, I made a bunch of schedule changes and we'll just move stuff around live months and months and months before the con. Like, yeah, the schedule's going to change. Who cares? Why hide it from you until two weeks before and then pretend that schedules don't change, guys? Don't Why does every con do it wrong? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, we got all that stuff coming up, but no real news there. And I actually have been watching a ton of anime. Mm-hmm. In fact, I paid... For the Funimation streaming site, I independent for, of Crunchyroll. I pay for Crunchyroll, I'm not paying for Funimation. The thing is, all the new anime I want to watch, other than uh, Yo A Pedal, is on Funimation. And you know what else is on Funimation that I never actually is? The anime people actually noticed that the Oscars are kind of messed up because of that guy. They didn't notice the year before, the year before, the year before. Well, the year. because now they had that guy who was a real Oscar voter who said he voted for Big Hero 6 because... He watched it with his kids, and he wasn't too keen on the two Chinese movies that were in contention, which I assume he meant Song of the Sea and Princess Kaguya. The, uh, the way Oscars are decided, old right, white men, is a bunch of and old, they don't even watch them. Ninety percent of the people who vote are old white dudes. They're not required to watch every movie. They just get these free screener copies, and they just vote. And they're members of the Academy, whoever the fuck they are, and they can vote or even abstain. On categories, if they don't give a shit. They vote pretty randomly. And it's just a bunch of old white American dudes, and they just decide. It doesn't, you know, and then people are like, oh, I'm so thankful I won this award. It's like, as far as I'm concerned, if you win an Oscar nowadays or ever, that might even mean your movie is worse because it's a movie that old white.